this is it. Today is finally the day. It's October 26th. Chevrolet just revealed the all-new uh, 2023 CA Corvette Z06. And I'm actually here with the lead development engineer, Aaron. How you doing, Aaron? What pleasure oh, well, to meet thanks. you. Glad I, I have so many questions about this car right here. So instantly, though, after watching that live stream debut, 670 horsepower, right? The most powerful production V8 ever made. And you guys achieved that by going to, to the flat plane crank. Mm -hmm. So, so I got to ask, when you guys were first developing the mid-engine Corvette, did you guys know way back that you wanted to venture into the flat plane crank design like all the exotic brands out there? It was, yep. There was definitely plans for that and people were just talking about, boy, wouldn't it be cool if we could have that, yeah. even though we've never done it before. And yeah, it's come to fruition here with a huge power number that we're really, really proud of. So what all went into building a, your first ever flat plane crank V8 for a production road car? Because obviously there's a lot of, um, well, engineering standpoints that could be um, pretty difficult to deal with, right? When it comes to the vibrations, you're spinning the motor much faster than a you know, normal um, you know, LT2 right. V8 in right. the Stingray. So was that pretty hard to try to figure out initially and then work to this? Yeah, we knew early. We needed to build some properties, we'd call them early development properties or engineering development properties, so that uh, it was a narrow body car with this engine in it. I, I gotcha. We put limo tin on the glass so you couldn't see what was inside because it's obviously very different. And yeah, we basically would start, we had a 5,000 RPM limit to start, and then 6,500 I think, and then 7,500 and then full tilt 8,600. And that was all based on the dyno, engine dyno work. So as they progressed, we could bring the car along further, but we kept it in a baby steps kind of method. I gotcha. Because, yeah, it's a lot of new found territory for us that is hard to... So, so, so initially, when you guys were developing this new car, right away, one of your goals were um, beat the previous generation uh, Z06, right? And then doing that, being all motor, that is just such an incredible feat. I'm very, very impressed at how you guys did that. And I I've been tracking um, my um, Stingray for such a long time, and right away, though, everything that I've honestly been wanting for that car to make faster, it looks like you've done it. You've got yeah. the ultimate performance tires you possibly we buy the cup two r's right right this is though they are pretty expensive but when you put them on the car you can extract every ounce of performance out of it yeah the idea was uh, racing technology for the street right so the closest we always said to ourselves this would be the closest one we can do to c8r which has you know been out in the public for two years now kind of hiding in plain sight yeah and this car basically is as close as we could do to that the Z06 certainly is not quite as extreme, but we're really proud of the chassis on that car too. They share common components with the Z07 for everything except the spring rates. So, so versus a standard um, Stingray, do you mind if we go over basically what's different with the bodywork? Obviously, you have wider front fenders, right? Yeah, one clue here that I uh, point people to is on the Stingray, this point of this uh, headlight blends right into the fender lip. So you can see this extra width on both sides is kind of what you're gaining on the I front. Do you know approximately how much wider it really is versus standard? 3.6 inches. 3.6 in inches. So, so then up front, how wide tires do you actually have with those carbon fiber wheels? These are 275 30s on a 20 inch wheel, 10 inch wide. So a little bit smaller than the C7s, but you've got a lot less weight up here to react. And so we went smaller in the front and bigger in the rear. So when it comes to the carbon ceramic brakes, do you think that for, for us track going enthusiasts, these are gonna wear pretty good versus, um, cause I know with other manufacturers, sometimes carbon brakes can wear quicker than others, but do you guys try hard to make all the components, the consumable components um, last as long as possible? We do, yeah, we have metrics where the rotors need to last a certain amount of time, the wheel, ba wheel bearings, the brake pads. Okay. It depends on what track you're on, to be honest. Uh, places like the Nurburgring, brake pads last forever. It's very transient and short brake zones, but places like Laguna Seca, yeah, Laguna's there's kinda... not a lot of brake cooling opportunities <laughs> there, and there's a lot of point and shoot, you know, accelerate brake, accelerate brake. So that's gonna eat pads more quickly. I think the benefit with these is with the weight distribution we have, the front and rear handle a lot more braking duty together, and most front engine cars, you know, the front pads are gonna be more apt to wear yeah. quickly. And then what is the weight distribution for the Z06? Given you have a new motor in the back, is that lighter, is that heavier than the previous engine? It's 39% uh, front weight distribution. Regarding the um, how, how things you know last over time in the racetrack, 
putting on Cup 2 hours, obviously them being the stickiest ties you can possibly buy, how do you compare the lap time performance between um, lap one on the racetrack and then let's say um, the end of the day? Okay. Do you find that the lap times are consistent or is it like... We do. Okay. That's actually something we're really proud of with this car. Part of it is the Cup 2R, right? We really put a design goal to say this thing needs to have hero pace for as long as it can. Okay. And part of it too is the car. It's a little more friendly on tires with the mid-engine architecture. So um, the, the weight distribution helps to some degree. The tire sizing helps to some degree. Uh, one big thing we've noticed, and others have done this too, is the larger diameter rear really stretches the tire patch uh, longitudinally, so it gives you a lot more grip. So since you have 21-inch wheels in the back, do you notice that you gain any performance advantage having the taller uh, um, wheels and also the, uh, the lower sidewall tires? The taller t wheel or the longer tire patch is a huge enabler. Really? That gives the shape instead of kind of a thin oval, you know, it makes it more stretched out from a 4F standpoint. So it gives you more ability to put power down and then all the weight in the back really helps it too. They're almost more so than the width, I'd say. Really? The taller tires. That's another thing. Having 345 rear tires, I mean, that's significantly wider than a lot of the um, exotic competition out there, right? Mm -hmm. Like Huracan's 305s, I have a McLaren 610T, and that car has, from the factory, 285s. That's yeah. really skinny, right? Yeah. But then having such wide tires on this car, well, what, what made you guys want to go so wide with the, the, the rear and also the front tires? Yeah, it's a Corvette signature thing, I think. You know, always kind of up in the game with the 335s on the C7, 345s here. You know, a lot of it was based upon the weight distribution where I, we went smaller in the front and bigger in the rear relative to C7. So we didn't take them both up. You don't really need that much in the front when you've I gotcha. got less weight up front. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a signature element when you see the width of this car and it helps fill out the wheel wells. And one fact for you is this is the widest carbon fiber wheel on the market right really? now. Really? 13-inch wide wheel. And then how much does it weigh? Uh, All together, they're 40 pounds lighter than the aluminum wheels. Really? The same size. So, so have you guys announced how much each specific one weighs? We haven't, no. Oh, you haven't? Well, I'm just going to throw this out there. I know you can't say anything, but uh, my old track pack GT500 had a 20-inch carbon wheels, and that weighed like 17 pounds. So I cannot wait to see how much your, yours weigh. But it's really, really important having these kinds of wheels, because a lot of guys don't realize that um, putting on carbon fiber wheels, you have that unsprung mass that gets lower. Carbon fiber wheels transform the way the cars feel. They do. Feel. So, did you guys initially, from you know, when you designed this car, what made you think, hey, I want to go after carbon wheels? Because it's still like it's still new type of um, you know technology. It is. You know, I think Corvette's always the tip of spear for GM, and we wanted to get in this game. Others have done it, right? And having a carbon fiber wheel really gives us the opportunity to play in that space. We've been very surprised at how it transforms the driving experience. Really? And I know others have said that, you know, in the media or other cars. I don't think there's too many cars that have both aluminum and uh, carbon option. I yeah. think the SF90 does, the Ferrari, but, uh, you know, the Mustangs kind of had their own setup for each wheel. Uh, this really does transform the car. I notice it most in the transitions, like a slalom or quick left, right, left turn. Really? Um, the ability to uh, change direction and then stop it immediately where there's no overshoot or kind of this uh, lagging on the car. It's just immediately in how it transforms into a turn or turns into a, a left-right combo. Uh, we see it in lap time too. There's how do you compare, so if you bought a normal Z06 versus a Z07 performance package, are the lap time differences, are they significant? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It depends on what road course, but we usually see three to four seconds. Really? Two, yeah. And that, that's with the Cup 2 R's and so forth? Mm -hmm. I guess one other thing too, regarding lap times, when you guys were running your um, Nürburgring time, I know that's not out yet, but um, did you guys find a specific camber that works best with the setup and that will, will, will that come with the car in the sense of like the owner's manual telling people how to properly set it up? Sure. Yep. And then I know with my C8 Corvette, there was one thing that it said for track use, add two extra quarts of transmission fluid. Mm. So this being the track variant, did it come with that from the factory? It does, you don't even yes. need to do that, in fact. Um, that's something we're really proud of is, yeah, there's no longer a need to overfill the transmission. This uh, at the nominal fluid setting handles every track we've ever taken it to with this amount of grip, this amount of power, 
and braking, um, we've made sure that that's ready to go. Moving to the front of the vehicle, can you explain what all is going on here with these different vents and blades pointing in different directions? Sure. So the outboard heat exchangers are the same as Stingray. They're very big. We did increase the fan power on this car to a higher capability, higher wattage fans. And then the inside, uh, we've added a fifth heat exchanger. So two up front, two in the back corners on the export model for the Stingray and the Z51. But this car gets its own uh, fifth heat exchanger in the front. Really? They're all high temp coolant up here. So they all work in concert together to keep the engine cool. I mentioned the oil temps, the bogey was much lower than what we've had in small blocks. So uh, to do that, we had to add this. It doesn't impact any of your frunk volume though. So really, uh, same exact frunk as the Stingray and Z51. So you retain all the usability of the car without any sacrifice there. So that, that is very impressive. So, so coming down again, these ducts right here, are these are front brake ducts? Or they are. are they? Yeah, and they're pretty neat. You can see, I don't know if you can see it here, but they pretty much lead <laughs> right into the rotor. I'll zoom in on and that. So Hopefully it's kind of dark, but yeah, that is really neat how you guys blended that in. The center of the car is always going to be the highest pressure air, so we try to grab it as close to the center as we can without impacting uh, you know, the center radiator there. And then in this car with the Z07, you get this chin spoiler, or splitter, excuse Are me. Are they all finished in carbon fiber? You can have painted or exposed. So I'm guessing it's more affordable to have the, uh, the painted versus the carbon because it takes longer to show the weave, right? It would be, yep. And then have you guys announced when um, like the packaging would be available to look at? I know pricing's not announced yet, but like do you guys have like a good framework um, to kind of go over briefly of like what it's going to look like when you get the car? Do all Z07s come with carbon fiber wheels and so forth? Oh, I see what you mean. The order guide type thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, the configurator is live now, so all the packaging options are available online. I got to ask, what made you guys go with this design right here for the side intake? Because obviously the intake itself looks to be very similar to the C8R, but then seeing this line right here is very interesting. You mind if you explain kind of yeah, like the design process? Yeah, you know, that was one of the last design elements that we had hidden. If you look at all the camo cars, we puffed this area out with some foam and packaging and tape to hide that that was there and wanted people to think it still was just the Stingray, which is kind of that boomerang looking thing. This is more of that spear and I think it it lends into the theme of the car I guess you could say with a little more presence in the side and then this you know grew a, a large amount in width. The door is the same as the Stingray so we had to figure out how to make the door carry over with a larger width uh, quarter panel. Then so, the side screw right here is standard with the Z07 package? It's standard on um, all the cars, it's carbon in the Z07 and available as an option on the Z06 with carbon. So this is it right here. How many liters again was it? 5.5? 5.5 liters, yep. So you've been racing, well, a race car version of this engine non-stop, right? Yeah, for two years now, right? Oh my gosh. extremely well. So then when you guys were developing this engine right here, you said how much does it weigh in comparison versus the uh, original um, V8 in the normal Stingray? It's uh, very similar in weight when you add the componentry together. It's a little bit hard you. to do A to B uh, perfect comparison, but no worries. they're very similar in mass. So when it comes to these engines right here, since the performance um, figures with them are so high, again, the largest, no, not largest, but the most powerful production V8 ever made, how are you guys looking at pr producing these engines? Are you going to be producing them at a separate plant or are they going to be hand built and so forth? Hand built, the performance build center in Bowling Green. So right alongside the assembly line, there's a name of each person that builds one of these, and I think there's 10 to 12 people, I thought, uh, who have been trained. Really? They have to test into this, so, you know, prove their merit on how to assemble the cylinder head bolts in the right order without looking at a, an instruction manual. You know, yeah. kind of have this innate sense of how to do this properly. Have you guys announced if you can go to, um, we'll, we'll sign up on the build sheet to build your engine no, no. at the plant? We're bringing that back, yes. Oh, that is going to be insane. I got to say that. So then when it comes to producing a 670 horsepower, how much torque do you have? It's 460 foot pounds at 6,300 RPM. Did you find that you had to do a lot of reworking to the DCT transmission to cope with this um, powertrain? We, uh, not so much to cope with it, but to optimize the, the final drive is shorter. The gear shift points are uh, pushed out compared to a normal 
uh, small block V8 where there's more torque down low. You know, this engine really likes to be up higher in the RPMs to really come alive. Having a flat plane crank V8 now, um, are you, were you guys looking thoroughly into what it would be like to maintain that for, from an owner's perspective? Is it much more difficult than a normal push rod V8 or is it like getting access to it and working on it? Is it be pretty straightforward? I think it's very similar. You know, the architecture was built for this engine. Uh, the bore spacing is the exact same, so the length of the engine is very similar. The service procedures to get in and out are the same. We have the same access for the oil change. Um, one uh, good fun fact for this is this is the first time we've done a 5W50 oil. Really? So it's a high grade, you know, very wide band oil that uh, the targets for this car were very low oil temperatures for track type usage or Audubon usage. So no overheating on the track? No. No, we can say that very confidently. Very confidently, that, that is awesome. <laughs> so the beauty of this is uh, the oil doesn't really wear out because we keep the temperature so low. Really? And they've got lower targets than we did on small blocks, so it tends to just kind of go along for the ride without wearing out or shearing much off. So closing this up, when we look at this massive carbon fiber rear wing out back, have you guys announced the actual downforce figures for the Z07 package? We have. Yep, it's uh, I believe it's 784 pounds total, and the beauty of this is it's six percent more downforce at eight percent less drag than our ZR1 ZTK package. Which really, is kind of a king of the hill right now. And then, what would the top speed be with this setup? Is that announced? We haven't announced that yet. I, I gotcha. But then, if we look at the um, the non Z07 package, well, what would the downforce figures be with that lower um, rear wing? Yeah, that's an interesting uh, setup. So, with the spoiler, it's not really a wing. Yeah. We've got uh, pieces on the back that are um, the wickers that we call them, similar to a C7 Z06, where you can add height to it to gain more rear downforce. If you add those track wickers, wickers which will come as um, customer available install in the trunk of the car. Okay. <clears throat> and then underneath in the front splitter, there's a stall gurney that you can remove that powers up the, the front splitter or the underwing. With those, it's uh, on the order of 360 pounds of downforce. Every really? So, so, so if you were going to be a drag racing or a straight line enthusiast, you would get the normal Z06, right? And then if you want the track one, get this. The Z07 is faster out of the hole, 0 to 60. It's the grip of the tire. I, I got gotcha. so you. Cut too hard, then that makes sense. Yeah, the wheel uh, mass doesn't really come into play. It's more just the tire doesn't really lose grip. That is awesome to hear. So, so with this package itself, how much does it weigh? The Z07 with carbon wheels is our lightest. We're using a dry weight of, I think it's 3,400 and... 50 pounds, 3450. I gotcha. Like and then real quickly towards where the vehicle, do you mind if you just go over what all went into the design philosophy for like these vents right here, and then also is that a fuser down below with the, um, the quad tipped exhaust pipes? Sure. Yeah, so here if you compare it to the Stingray, you know, a lot wider and a lot shorter. So the Stingray's maybe more of like a rectangle or a square shape. This gets a lot more width that accentuates the width of the car. So the idea was to, to draw your eye out and down kind of a width and <laughs> I gotcha. low and wide. And then the rear fascia really developed over the course of the exhaust change. So with the outboard exit exhaust on the Stingray, you know, that space is filled with exhaust tips. We've moved them to, set to the center and now put the nice honeycomb mesh in along with this bezel to uh, kind of give this a different look and different flavor. So, so, so what all is with that statement I heard during that reveal of how this exhaust system is designed more so as like, like I wouldn't say a sound system, but he used an interesting name for the design. What was it again? Yeah, Tad used the word parabolic reflection. So if you can, you can't see it probably here, but you can feel in here there's a radius or a diameter change in the pipe. So this is about four inches wide and on the inside where it ends, which is, you know, five inches inside there, it's more like five inches. So there's a reflection that happens when the exhaust pulses ex exit the pipe inside. They hear, they reflect off this bezel and go back towards the cavity. Really? So it's a way to get more sound inside the car without um, really changing anything back here, right? It's a very natural way to do it. Yeah, one thing to draw your attention to us is the 70th year of Corvette is 2023. So there's a small little easter egg added to the glass like we did on the front in the last yeah. few years 
where it's uh, 1953 to 2023. So, are there any other design was, like Easter eggs hidden with this vehicle anywhere? Like like extra Zoras or stuff like that? No, I think <laughs> everything's exposed now that that's out. Well, I got to ask you, with my C8R, I know that the plaque right there in the middle, the middle of the uh, cabin is um, numbered. Are the Z06s numbered at all? Not that I'm aware of, no. The brakes themselves, being carbon ceramic, what are the exact um, size and like inches for the rotors and so forth? Well, I can tell you metric. <laughs> okay. It's hard to memorize it all in inches and metric, but I the gotcha. front are 398 millimeters and the rears are 391. And how do you compare the stopping power versus a standard Stingray moving to um, the larger calipers, rotors, and the carbons? Yeah, they're pretty undefeatable. You know, <laughs> in all the tracks we've gone to, uh, high-speed stuff, they just never give up. I think the, the stopping power matches the car. The tire's a big part of it on this car. Uh, because the, the tires can make you extract all that braking performance out of the car. Yeah. That, that's the only touch in the ground, right? The, the whole car relies on those tires and having the best tires yep. on the planet. That's how you put down the fastest lap times. It is. And then the lightweight wheel helps as well with uh, stopping distance. So, yeah, the brakes are definitely here to play. Um, the biggest ones we've ever put on a Corvette. Well, I got to ask you, mind if I hop inside and check it out? I don't mind. Okay, this is it. So moving into the interior of the 2023 C8 Corvette Z06. Right away, you have um, what's similar to two standard um, C8 Corvettes with the competition sport bucket seats. But then hopping inside, this uh, does have the suede, which I love that suede finish. You got to order the car with that, in my opinion. But I'm um, stepping over. The side skirt is not too far out, and it kind of bends in. So when you get inside, it's not actually too difficult, which is really, really neat. But then moving all the way over, right away, you can instantly tell how you have the carbon fiber finish on the actual steering which is really cool um, and then wow this carbon fiber is absolutely ever so this is an option right for the, the Z07 package it is on all the Z06s and, and Stingray as well and right next to us we also have Taj the executive chief engineer right that's your role yes, that is absolutely unreal so this entire time having the, the Stingray out in the back of your head you knew you have this unbelievable exotic like variant in we the did. works right yes and we couldn't say anything about you couldn't it say anything. so <laughs> today you guys finally you know drop the bombshell and i i yep. cannot wait to see everyone's reactions online and especially moving into the inside of the vehicle i love what you guys did here with all the carbon fiber so this was all thanks to the design team right they're like looking at things oh, that they yeah. can make it and we more... all love carbon fiber you know that we exactly. splatter it all over the outside of the car everywhere we can use it it's stiff it's light it's expensive um but yeah, the, the pieces on the inside are really nice because it, a lot of manufacturers, if you look at what they do, they use little bits of flat carbon and use it as kind of an accent. We took the sculptural shapes of our interior and rendered them in carbon all in one piece, which is really hard to do. You can see how this whole piece on the door wraps all the way around, all the way up here. Uh, and it only breaks where it has to jump to the IP where the door swings open. So beautiful pieces of sculpture on both doors and then also the whole center console I know. is carbon fiber including the cup holder door. Uh, the only thing that's leather is this island of leather, the wrist pads that help you use the touch screen. I gotta ask you, so when you guys say in the marketing campaign, put in the world on notice, you specifically mean all the exotic uh, uh, supercars, right? And I didn't so for write that. <laughs> <laughs> so I gotcha. obviously we're not trying to stick our finger in the eye of any of our competitors. You know, we've got fantastic competitors. They do amazing cars. We're trying to be spoken in the same breath as them. And so we've, over the generations, really upped our game better, better, better. We aspire, aspire to be the best regardless of price, uh, but we also want to offer it at a, a price that people can really attain. So, so what was like developing this car with Cup 2Rs? Did you guys know like right away that you guys wanted to go with that compound um, compared well, to others? If you look at what we've done historically, we, we've used very aggressive tires for the most track-oriented version of the Z06. And it's interesting because the architecture, uh, we didn't have to lean quite so hard uh, on the tires. And so the tires aren't just hero lap, like qualifying tires. Really? Uh, they stay consistent lap after lap after lap. And that was one of the goals we had. So we didn't have to push the compounding right to the razor's edge to get that hero lap. Uh, this car will actually hang with a C7 uh, ZR1 uh, for the quickest lap of a session. 
Uh, but if you look at the average lap over a full tank of fuel, this car would actually be quicker than a Z. Really? Yeah. So then on, on lap one versus like your final lap of the day, would you say the performance um, from margin with the lap times is pretty similar? Uh, yeah, the drop off is zero or negative. Really? Um, you know, the car gets lighter as you use fuel and uh, in a lot of our development activities, uh, some of the drivers actually, their fastest lap is the last lap before they come in. So given how these tires, you know, they do cost more than cup twos, you are getting your money's worth. Yes. Uh, we try to push Michelin right to the edge of their capability. And uh, this car, um, I don't know if it's in the documentation, but the car we're sitting in right now, the Z07 package, will corner at 1.22 Gs, uh, which is actually higher uh, than the previous gen Z06. And it's mainly driven by aero. Uh, really? Because we aren't pushing on the tires quite as much. So is that downforce adjustable at all? Or is it no, fixed for this fixed, version? Fixed downforce, but the most downforce has got 6% more downforce than the last gen ZR1 with the big really? wing. So the most downforce, uh, seventh gen uh, car, we have 6% more downforce and 8% less drag in the same configuration. So, so you guys found a good um, you know, like ratio when it comes to designing that rear wing and so forth to balance the drag to the downforce. Yes, and uh, the most important stuff you can't see. Everybody focuses on the wing, but the underwing under the, the nose, under. and we have strakes that evacuate air under the floor pan, which creates a pressure differential between the top of the car and the bottom, helps suck, suck the car to the road or track. Um, that's where you get a lot of efficiency. Well, you know what though, I gotta ask you, mind if we start up real quickly towards the end of this video? I don't mind, I don't know what's gonna happen. Is, We're inside. Are we allowed to start up? Eighty six hundred RPM. RPM. So, what do you say? This is the most radical and crazy project the Corvette team has embarked on yet. Yes, the the vehicle's the most different we've ever done for a Z06, and we always did a hot rod version of the small block V8, either you know charged or. Uh, I'm gonna we, turn it off. Okay. What a quick rip. So they can hear you. <laughs> it makes quite a bit of thunder in this small room. I know. Um, but yeah, having being able to do an engine with a uh, starting from a blank sheet of paper, like ground up, bespoke engine for the mission of this car, and it was uh, it was a moonshot. We call it a, a moonshot, and the engine was name is Gemini. There's little rockets uh, on the engine in different locations. Um, we weren't sure we were going to be able to get all the way there uh, when we started, but through the perseverance of the engineers and the passion uh, on the powertrain uh, guys part, you know, they're enthusiasts too. And so they wanted to do the absolute best for this car, leave no stone unturned, every technology, every trick in the book to sort of get 670 horsepower out of 5.5 liters is just magic. Um, this is this is the rear or the front wheel? Rear, 13 rear? inches wide. Widest carbon wheel on the market. Really? Well, I don't know what it weighs on an absolute basis, but it's super light. Extremely light. Um, <laughs> but it saves uh, over 40 pounds versus the forged aluminum wheels, which are pretty lightweight wheels Of themselves. unsprung weight. Yeah. So then can I ask you what this um, white coating is in the center of the wheel? Sure, actually this whole, in addition, it's not just carbon fiber, this wheel is amazing. We use our proprietary clear coating. Not everybody does that, so the resins in carbon fiber will break down under UV, and we were one of the first people to do clear coated carbon that'll last the life of the car. So same kind of technology here, and it looks kind of funny if you look inside, you can see a white coating, and if you feel it, you can tell it's something very different. It's actually a ceramic treatment, you can imagine coming off a track hot, stopping right away, how hot the brakes are, and all the hot air rises around the rotor and impinges on the inside of the barrel of the wheel. You really have to protect the super valuable carbon fiber and the resin, especially, from those temperatures, and that's what that material does. It looks kind of funny when you first look at it. It's light, it's white, so it reflects uh, heat. Um, and after you drive the car, honestly, for a couple of days, it just sort of disappears into the background. But it is a very high-tech coating intended to protect the wheel. We really sweat the details uh, with our partner, Carbon Revolution, on this. Uh, it's not just like an off-the-shelf carbon wheel that we're applying uh, to this car. It's a totally bespoke design 
our stylists working with their technical experts and then doing more testing than we've ever done on any wheel to make sure that it's much, much stronger than an aluminum wheel. So will production be more limited for the carbon wheel equipped vehicles? Uh, it's a check the box option. Okay. So um, I don't know how many people are going to check the box. Obviously it's an expensive option yeah. for wheels. <laughs> All cars, that's a lot of carbon fiber. So it'll be an expensive option. I don't remember exactly how much it's going to be. But we don't want to force people into it even though there's actually lap time associated with putting uh, carbon wheels in your car. And even daily driving, you can sense the stiffness of the chassis. It's not just lighter, it's stiffer laterally. And so you can really feel that in the chassis. Can you, can you actually quantify exactly like how much faster the car is with the carbon wheels? Or is uh, it? We're still working on a definition, but on a two minute lap, it's gonna be something like a second. Really? A second and a half. So, Honestly, at the beginning, I thought, well, it's directionally correct, but it's probably going to be round off error. It's not round off error. We're trying to figure out exactly how much it is, but it's going to be noticeable, equivalent to a fair horsepower increase. All righty, Taj, I really appreciate, again, um, speaking with you about this vehicle. I honestly cannot wait to see what I can do at the racetrack and seeing the footage of you guys at Coda and so forth this thing out there and also taking on the exotic cars would be so much fun so i definitely would want to get one myself so my final question of the day is do you guys have like an eta for when um order banks will open up for this model year and so forth and like when production will be so we're telling everybody it's a 23 model year which traditionally that would be next summer and so that's where we're hoping to have everything together final testing done validated so yeah uh Summer next year, we should have them for sale, so that means people will be able to order in the spring sometime. Awesome. Thank you.